In a recent Twitter post by Jeff Barr, the chief evangelist of AWS, he announced the discontinuation of a small number of AWS services. He goes on to mention that AWS will no longer be onboarding new customers for these services, but the services will be maintained for existing ones. This is an important detail, since many folks took this news as to mean that these services are being shut down entirely, which is not the case. They'll continue to operate for existing users as they do today, but they won't be receiving any new feature enhancements or updates. Nowhere in this tweet, though, is the actual list of services. And after some careful digging on the internet, I found the list, which includes the following. First is AWS Cloud Search, a NoSQL search database useful for text and location-based queries. Second is Cloud9, a cloud-based integrated development environment, a service that always confused me as to why it existed in the first place. Third is SimpleDB, the predecessor to DynamoDB, so I guess some good things did come from that one. AWS Forecast, a machine learning-based service for time series forecasting. S3 Select, a feature of S3 and not a service that allows you to retrieve just a subset of data within a file in S3. AWS Data Pipeline, a service used to help you pipe data from different sources to different destinations, probably being replaced by AWS Pipes. Finally, AWS Code Commit, a source control service. Now, a peculiar thing with this announcement is that it didn't come to light until some clever Reddit users started to notice certain AWS services wouldn't let them create new resources. Usually these types of announcements are accompanied by an AWS blog post, but that didn't seem to happen this time. Almost as if AWS was in damage control mode, the tweet by Jeff Barr seemed rushed and didn't contain useful details like the names of the services actually being deprecated. Definitely not a good look for AWS. On a personal note, I'm actually a bit pissed off since my team just designed a system that was going to leverage AWS code commit. I suppose we'll have to do some form of migration now, which I'm sure is going to be a massive waste of time. Despite my problems, I'm happy to see that AWS is appearing to divert engineering resources away from older, less popular services and hopefully towards ones that are actually useful. I guess one could hope.